This is worksheet number three of the polyatomic packet, and worksheet number three is going to seem a little bit familiar. I want you to think back to the ionic compounds packet, to the worksheet where we learned about special metals. Remember that there are seven special metals, they're listed here, and what's special about them is that depending on what they bond with and what conditions they form under, there are two possible different charges that they can have. So, for example, iron, Fe on the periodic table is both a plus 2 and a plus 3 charge written in its square. Right? And so if we want to name the compound, we need to know exactly uh, which charge it has. And so to do this, we're going to have to look at what it's bonding with. Now, in the ionic compounds packet, it was always a metal bonding with a nonmetal, and so we looked at the oxidation number of the nonmetal on the periodic table, and we remembered that compounds have to always add up to have a neutral charge, and so we could infer or figure out what the charge of the metal was. Well, really similar process here, okay? We're still going to count on the fact that, as I wrote down here, compounds are always neutral, so the charge of the metal and the charge of in this case, the polyatomic ion are going to have to add up to zero. But this time, it's not a metal bonding with a nonmetal. It's bonding with a polyatomic ion. And if you use your chart, you always know the charge of the polyatomic ion. So that's what we're going to use to infer or figure out the charge of the metal. Okay, now, if when you were doing the ionic compounds packet, you liked using the sort of math way. You can take a look at this example. We could go over it in class, but I find for a lot of you drawing pictures helps a little bit more. So let's look at our first example. Okay, here we have one mercury atom. Okay, and we know mercury, if we look on the periodic table, can either be plus one or plus two, and we're trying to figure out which one it is. And we have two of these NO3s. NO3 is called nitrate. So here's an NO3 and here's another NO3. And if we look up on our list of polyatomic ions, NO3 has a charge of minus one. So that's got a minus one charge and so does that. And so if we add them together, we have an overall negative two charge coming from our polyatomic ion which means whatever the charge of that one single mercury is, we have to be able to add it up with negative two and get zero. Well, if mercury had a plus one charge, mm, that's not gonna work. Plus one and a negative two, they don't add to zero. So this mercury must have a charge of plus two. And so that's why we call this mercury, Roman numeral two, nitrate. Right? Quite similar to what you've done uh, in the ionic compounds packet. All right, if we go down to the second table, you'll see that we're just going in the opposite direction, much like we did in the ionic bonding packet. Okay, so here, remember that the Roman numeral tells us the charge of that special metal. So lead can either have a plus two or a plus four charge, but in this compound, the Roman numeral is telling us it's got a plus two charge nitrate, we look up on our list of polyatomic ions, right? It ends with ATE, which should indicate it's a polyatomic ion. And sure enough, it's NO3 with a minus one charge. And then we swap and drop. This one comes down here to the PB, so we've just got one PB. And this two comes down here to the NO3. Now remember, whenever we're bringing a number down to a polyatomic ion, we have to use parentheses. So that's why there's parentheses here and then this two outside of it, right? Because that two got brought down, okay? So um, there is some space here if you need more space to write your drawings out to show your work. Um, but otherwise, we will keep working on this the next time you get to class.